Hi, David Gregg here, Rhode Island Natural History Survey. Did you know Rhode Island had an aquarium? Actually, it's got a couple. The oldest and largest aquarium is the Biomes Marine Biology Center in North Kingstown. I decided to take a look and you can come along. The Rhode Island Natural History Survey presents videos to showcase the animals, plants, geology, and natural systems that surround us, and the people and organizations working to understand and conserve them. I'm here with Mark Hall, who is the inventor and uh, proprietor of biomes. Uh, and so when I, you used to say that you got all of your fish, all, all the things here right out of Narragansett Bay. It's probably 90% local, um, local animals or tropicals that, that stray up here. Um, that's what we try to focus on is the local animals. The um, some of the ones like you mentioned, like our glowfish uh, that you saw, and some of the other uh, exhibits, um, they showed it was something that I wanted to show a habitat or an adaptation or something that I wanted to show that you can't show with a local animal. So that that's that's where those um, other other things fish come from. Other animals come, come in. What do you hope that Biomes is doing? Why, why did you want to open a marine biology center? Well, I'm hoping that it, that it raises, we're raising awareness for, you know, the variety of, animal, variety of life that's living in, in Narragansett Bay. Um, you know, you can't, you can't really appreciate what's, you know, if you're in a boat, just looking over the, you know, over the surface of the water, you can't really appreciate what's under there. And I think once once you do see how many different kinds of animals there are, and also get that, I mean, that's the goal of the touch tanks, is to get that personal interaction with the animals. I think it really brings out, I mean, I've had people say things like, I'll never eat a flounder again. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, you know, just because they've had, the, you know, they see it, they, they interact with it. So when you come in, you have this right in front of you. It's the mangrove tank. The symbiosis tank is particularly notable with a clownfish, Finding Nemo, right? And a mandarin dragonette and beautiful anemones. I always thought sticklebacks were cool. There are things to touch everywhere. There are touch tanks. There's an enormous touch tank with sharks and rays in it. Tell me about the new, the new big touch tank. The, the shark tank? Yeah. So that's, um, I, wanted a I wanted a tank that we could keep sharks longer term rather than keep turning them over in the smaller tank. Because uh, once they once they get too big, I really don't like them having. We we used to keep them in a 1,200 gallon tank. Um, this one's a uh, close to 4,000 gallons. Um, but also rays. We wanted to be able to keep uh, some of the rays, which need a lot of open open space. Um, so I had that built by a um, uh, by a carpenter, and we just lined it with a pool liner and finished it off. And it works it works great. They love it. So it's nice and shallow but there's a ton of surface area for them to, to move in. Right. It's 36 feet long by 18 feet long, so it's a big tank. There are other ones with horseshoe crabs and shellfish and starfish. Thank you. 
All around the aquarium, there are things to be found hiding in pots and pipes and under rocks. I remember you said that it took you a long time to get the fiddler crab colony right. Can you talk about what you had to do to get the fiddler crab colony to go? Uh, well, the big thing with that is over time, it um, builds up. It builds up ammonia and salt, and everything's kind of trapped in the sand that they need to do, they dig the burrows, and it destroys their shell. Um, so what I did was hook up a um, hook up a, um, a system that allowed water to salt water, salt water, uh, fresh water to flow slowly through the substrate um, and it and that flushes all of that out and um, the reason I use fresh water is because there's a lot of evaporation and the salt water it would it would evaporate and you would the, the, the sand would be uninhabitable it would just be basically a, a solid block of, of salt after a few months right um, and what I do is adapt I, it just happens that fiddler crabs can live in fresh or salt water so I just slowly acclimate them to full fresh water from, you know, from brackish, and and then they they live in there fine. Right. And you've got the one-way mirror over them, so the one-way mirror because they duck down in their holes if they see you. So this right. way they they won't see you. And, uh, why do you have turtles and tortoises and poison dart frogs? Um, well, we do. Um, a little bit of rescue, so any of the any of those types of animals are rescue. But I, I really wanted to include some. You know, we have uh, uh, lizards and things in the in the kids' play area. Um, just a just a change, just a change of pace of, you know, fish, 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 and then oh great, there's a big tortoise. Yeah. So just just kind of just to, to give us a little more variety of not just species but also types of animals. Yeah.
Well, there you go. That's our visit to Biomes. I've been bringing my kids here since they were tiny, and they still remember their favorite exhibits from years ago. It's just the kind of natural history project that I think people should know about, and I hope you'll go and visit. Natural History Survey videos are made possible through the generous contributions of members and friends. Want to help us do more environmental science and conservation? Hit the like button, share our videos with your circle, subscribe, or make a financial contribution on our website, ranhs.org, or through Patreon. Thanks, and see you out there.